personal reference list up there. It's got quotes that I've extracted from all the material. This is not something new. In fact, it's something pretty old. It's all standard stuff. Diagnosis. Again, ABPA is not a theory, it's diagnosis. Diagnosis is the application of standard established concepts and principles to a set of symptoms. When you work out what the pathology is, an attachment-based model predicts three symptoms, three child symptoms, with a diagnosing what's called pathogenic parenting. Parenting is producing pathology in the side. Makes first is an attachment system suppression towards a normal range parent. That's a very unusual symptom. You never ever see children rejecting an attachment bond to a normal range parent. Second, we'll see five narcissistic personality traits in the child's symptom display. Again, a very unusual symptom of child. The third symptom that it predicts is a encapsulated persecutory delusion. And I explain where this comes from, I'll explain it on Saturday. That's almost an impossible um, pathology or symptom for a targeted parent to create. So we have three very unusual symptoms and very disparate symptoms. All of them are predicted by this diagnostic model. They are captured and documented on the diagnostic checklist for pathogenic parenting. That's in the notebooks that you, you see there. It's just a simple checklist. The assessment protocol. So, the foundations in established constructs of principle produce a structured assessment protocol involving the diagnostic checklist and another one for the parenting practices of the targeted parent. You want to make sure the targeted parent's normal, the child's pathological. It's a structured assessment protocol that can identify the pathologies. Each symptom is highly unusual. All three together are predicted by an attachment-based model uh, as described in foundations. A model that makes a confirmable, disconfirmable prediction is called the scientific method. So what foundations make it PA does is it establishes a diagnosis. I say this is what the diagnosis is. And I'm predicting through these three really unusual disparate symptoms. If those symptoms are present in the child's symptom display, it is almost dead lock that the model that predicted those is true, that that's what we're looking at. Somebody else is going to have to explain to me how you get those three symptoms in a child. It's impossible. So this is a scientifically based method. We've got the two diagnostic indicators, or two documentation instruments, diagnostic checklist, and um, back to parenting and the parent practice brain state. The that information from those two to fill out those two doc documentation instruments can be completed in about six sessions. A six session, first two sessions each parent, second two sessions target parent and the child, third session each parent again, and we can gather that information. Just in March, I was court ordered by a court in Sacramento, California to conduct this structured assessment protocol. I completed it. I did the three sessions, the six sessions across three days. I had to turn around in my report to the court within two weeks. So this is a counterpoint to a child custody evaluation that can run in tens of thousands of dollars. The booklet attachment-based for alienation describes the assessment program, or the assessment program. Um, a treatment focused assessment protocol is a clinical psychology assessment. What this represents, the referral question is more limited in scope. It's not what the child custody should be. It's which parent is causing the child's attachment pathology. That's the <laughs> referral question. Which parent is causing the pathology and what do we do about it? Very focused clinical psychology referral question. Professional competence. That there are four domains of professional knowledge required for professional competence. Attachment system, family systems therapy, personality pathology, complex trauma. That the primary literature, 
there's primary literature that big kahunas there. There's also secondary literature. Uh, Linehan, uh, Vanderkoek, Stern is wonderful. Fonagy is wonderful. Mental health professionals who are dealing with the attachment system need to know the attachment system. Mental health professionals who are dealing with families need to know family systems there. Mental health professionals who are dealing with personality pathology need to know personality pathology. And if they're dealing with transgenerational transmission of trauma, they need to know that. Problem is, right now we have mental health professionals who are treating attachment pathology without knowing the attachment system, personality pathology without knowing personality, um, family systems, or treating families without knowing family systems therapy, treating complex trauma. So essentially we have electricians and plumbers treating doing open heart surgery and all the patients are dying. We're going to change that. We're going to get cardiac. I just delivered a petition to the APA with a contingent of parents. They are now on notice. The petition to the APA is in the handout. The Articles 1 and 2 lay the foundations. Article 3 makes allegations of profound and rampant um, ethical violations within forensic psychology. Uh, Article 4 is the remedy we are seeking. Um, we are taking on forensic psychology. There's a website, APA Complicity with Child Abuse. When I get back home, I'm driving this through the APA. The APA is going to have to deal with ethical code violations. I'm filing complaints with the Ethics Committee. We are altering stuff in the APA um, within clinical psychology. The remedy, diagnostic checklist one, or diagnostic indicator one, attachment pathology two, personality pathology three, a psychiatric delusion in the child represents a DSM-5 diagnosis of child psychological abuse. The, in all cases of psychological abuse, or in all cases of abuse, the professional standard of care and duty to protect requires a child's protective supervision. So, um, I'm running out of time. I won't discuss the contingent visitation schedule. That's a really cool. Um, it's run, it's uh, data-based, data-driven. All of this is data-driven based on the child's symptoms. The child's symptoms go up, we reduce the time of the pathogenic parent. The place I'm going to end with is a pilot program in Houston. Um, in, on May 22nd through the 24th, I was down in Houston, three days of seminars. I did one four-hour seminar for attorneys, and one judge who participated in that. We have about 10 attorneys and two days of seminars for the family therapists. So we have about 16 family therapists. And so that's up and running. The solution is here. This is also a replicable model. Next, when I get home, I'm going to take it out to Pennsylvania. Uh, Peter Newton is working with me here, BPM uh, Industries. He's my sort of representative in Europe. And we're looking to bring this over here as well, this pilot program for the family courts to deal with family pathology. Right now it's done in the direction of Children for Tomorrow, which is a um, not used to nonprofit. Dwight Lindsay is the program head. Jana Haney is the clinical director. I came in and did the training. They're doing it. That's, this is our program now. But it's based on the highest caliber of professional knowledge and expertise. Here's the structure of it. Every time the court gets some task in pathology, they're going to refer in for a six session treatment focus assessment. If ADP is present, it activates the, the program where we team a family therapist with an amicus attorney. So that's a sort of collaborative model. We're pointing at the attorney for the therapy and the therapist. That's assessment, leads to diagnosis, diagnosis, that's treatment, that's clinical therapy. Here's the structure within the court system. So, by the way, I refer to this oops, as the key. That's because I kind of see this as a key that unlocks it. Teaming the amicus, teaming an attorney with the therapist really unlocks the, the situation. So when the court runs into uh, a family in high conflict, oops, um, this going to refer over, we're going to toss a therapist on it to help stabilize the family. That is the structure of the program now. That family therapist on the inside, the therapist on the outside is the same person. 
So that's the structure of the program. When the court runs into a high conflict family, it starts with assessment. And so we go in and figure out what's going on. Assessment leads to diagnosis, diagnosis guides treatment. If ABPA is there, then it activates the program structure and we put a treatment team on. There, we are going to be recruiting university collaboration for both research, but also clinical internships. This is how we improve this quality of care over the next decade. We're going to create a special program within universities about putting internships into this, doing the treatments, or co-leading treatment groups, co-leading assessment, and we're going to improve the quality of care until we have neurosurgeons doing neurosurgery rather than electricians and plumbers. This requires the highest level of professional expertise, and that's what we're going to attain. Um, one little thing I want to point out at the end, consultation. Every month, the therapists, about five therapists, are going to meet with me on an online platform, and we're going to do clinical consultation groups like staffing a patient. I did that at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. I did it at my clinic. I did it That's standard practice for training people, is you do your staffing. We're going to have a clinical consultation group so that no therapist is ever alone in this. It is a clinical treatment team and the amicus attorney can sit in if they, if they need to. Um, coaches who are working with family can sit in. The uh, healthy family structure, pathological cutoff family structure. This is never healthy. We, we never wind up with this as an acceptable um, outcome. Just not happen. That's always in the child's best interest. Anybody want to know what the child's best interests are? There it is. I don't need an evaluation to tell you what the child's best interests are. And so there's the family court system. With that, I'm done. Thank